Hello friends, it's time for another delayed episode of Year of Rex. This is supposed to be June's episode. <laughs> I'm well aware it's probably gonna come out quite a ways into July. But if you don't know, Year of Rex is a series I'm doing this year where I get book recommendations from a different source, from a different place, once a month, and they're competing out to see where I get the best book recommendations from. And this month, I'm getting book recommendations from celebrities. <laughs> so I'm asking celebrities on Cameo what their favorite book is, and then I'm going to read it. I did this before with drag queens. I'm not going to do drag queens this time because I'm going to shake it up a little bit. But um, yeah, I did this before with drag queens and it was so much fun. So I picked three celebrities. I've picked one Real Housewife because I'm obsessed with Real Housewives. I picked Monica Garcia from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City who gave us an <laughs> incredible season last season. And then I've gone for two more nostalgic picks. I've picked James Masters who is Spike on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And growing up, my parents loved Buffy. It was like their number one show and they'd never let me watch it apart from the once more feeling episode which I grew up religiously watching which is an episode where they all like sing and dance but I have since watched the first three seasons of Buffy so I asked James and then I asked Freddie Prince Jr who plays Fred in the Scooby-Doo movies aka mine and Tom's favorite movies of all time <laughs> Scooby-Doo is like our favorite thing to watch together so I've asked them their favorite books and we're gonna find them out we're gonna see what they say and then we're gonna read them I am very nervous for this one but I think it's also gonna be very fun seeing what they say so come along with me let's find out what books we're gonna be reading in this vlog Okay, hello. If I look a bit red and patchy, I was just doing my gua sha routine <laughs> with my face oil. And whilst I was doing my gua sha routine and like trying to zen out, I got the email notification that Monica had sent to me. <laughs> Come here. I want it now. I want it all. I requested these this morning. This morning. This morning. Like, this has been less than 24 hours. It's been like less than 12. And she's got this speedy gal. <laughs> So I am too nervous. I can't wait to see. So even though I look, I was not planning on filming anymore tonight. I was zenning out. I'm like halfway through my skincare routine. We're watching it right this second. I feel sick. I, I hate doing this. I mean, I love it, but I'm so nervous. I also feel like Monica could say absolutely anything. So let's go, shall we? I feel sick. Hi, Megan. Hello, Monica. Monica. See you here. I'm not naked, bitch. Don't worry. I'm in a towel. <laughs> Okay, um, I just landed in California, in oh, LA, from New York, and I'm exhausted, and I had to take a shower, so, yes. I um, <laughs> look, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I don't fucking read. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh my god, am I not gonna get a book? Am I not gonna get a book? <laughs> well, she's done, we've got two minutes left of this video, so she's gonna say something. <laughs> Monica, it's okay. Even if you said like green eggs and ham, it's fine. You just gotta give me something. I don't. I don't. I don't even know if I would have the time to read. I'm Where not kidding. Go? I think the last book that I actually like sat down and read, like read, By was the like the Twilight series. Oh, <laughs> iconic. <laughs> iconic. That's so funny. I would reread Twilight oh for you. Oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. Pausing this quickly. What was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, these celebrities probably read my request and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Usually they just get like, can you wish my mom a happy birthday? Or like, you know, I love you, can you say hi? And I'm like, what? <laughs> they're like, what the hell? Anyways, just give me a book. I'll reread Twilight if she says nothing else. Um, Yeah, so honestly, if you have any books, you refer them to me. I think I actually read, <laughs> okay. The last like book 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 like you know series <laughs> i guess was twilight yeah the last book i read i read like i don't know seven habits of highly successful people and like i had to read them for my last job mm -hmm. we had like book assignments but they were all like self-help books yeah or education books so <laughs> those are the last things i read you know what i am gonna look i'm gonna look up and see what book I would read right now. Like, if I were to read a book, what would I pick? Because I don't read. I don't fucking read. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, bitch. I'm not going to be like, oh, I just read. Like, no. Because I didn't. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend like I like reading either. I, you know. I read the comment section. <laughs> which is the one thing I actually probably shouldn't read. Yeah. I feel yeah. 
But I think it's so cool what you're doing. I think that's such a great idea. Oh. It's really, really freaking creative. Big I love. actually really like that. And I'm going to have to pull my shit together and think about <laughs> what I would love to read. In Utah, the craze right now is like it ends with us or oh. whatever like that series of books Monica no that is like huge <laughs> in Utah right now <laughs> everyone's reading them everyone's obsessed all the mommy Mormon moms <laughs> are like oh, you know but I haven't read it I'm gonna do my homework girl love you thanks Monica what an icon right we have to decode what we're doing here okay I don't think I should read Twilight because I've read it and I've reread Twilight and Twilight you know I love Twilight I loved it when I was younger. Our options either are, the other books she mentioned are Hab Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Oh, <laughs> or it ends with us. Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Do you like this? No. Okay. We're either reading The Seven ha Habits of Highly Successful People or reading It Ends With Us. <laughs> No, no, okay. It's fine, this is the point of these videos. Seven habits of, I've always said I would never read Colleen Hoover. I've always said I would never do it. Never, never. I'm not a Mormon mummy from Utah. <laughs> so I think I should, oh, the seven has, that came out in 1999. Oh. Okay, I guess that's what we should read. Monica, thank you so much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm not reading Colleen Hoover. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So I'm gonna read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective, uh, uh, Highly Effective People? Is that what it is? Uh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Okay, and I'll try and get something from it. I'm gonna try and read it and get something from it. Okay, thank you, Monica. Big love. <laughs> okay, beauties, I'm back in the same spot. <laughs> couple of days later and James Masters aka Spike has sent me his cameo so shall we go ahead and watch it <laughs> I got the alert at like 6 a.m this morning maybe even when was it like 5 a.m um and I was like oh <laughs> I can't wait I feel sick whenever I have to watch these okay hey Megan it's James thanks for reaching out yeah um I guess right now I'm reading the last book of the Three Body Problem trilogy. Interesting. Uh, and I think they're just absolutely fabulous. <gasps> oh my god, we've got um, a reader on our hands. Another trilogy that I really love is the Ender trilogy. Uh, and Ender's Game is the first one. <gasps> oh my god. Um, We're getting books upon books. Speaker of the Dead is the second <laughs> one. I'm not sure. The Speaker of the Dead is just absolutely fabulous. Um, I would recommend those for fiction. Um, and then... Uh, also, the Bean trilogy of, of that. Orson Scott Card is a great writer. Uh, there's the Ender series, and then there's the Bean series. Uh, they're all these really good, but the Enders are, are my favorite. Um, and then nonfiction, I would say... Um, <laughs> oh, my God. A Purpose Guided Universe by Bernard Haish. He's an astrophysicist out of the University of Arizona, uh, who argues on the basis of science that this universe was specifically designed by an intelligent force, a mysterious intelligent force, wow. uh, so that intelligent life could come about. Uh, and it's not based on faith, it's science. Interesting. Uh, and it's really, really interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, I love reading. Uh, it sounds like you do too. Uh, so yeah, sometime next time you crack a book, know that I'm probably cracked a book too. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, here's the thing. With Year of Rex, I only ever do three books usually, and again, the average book of those. But because the Year of Rex table is based on average rating, I technically could read more than three. Because I think I should read one of his fiction, one of non-fiction. We're only reading one for Monica, I'm not reading Colleen Hoover. <laughs> but I guess we should read Ender's Game. This is the one that he like said was one of his favorites. So I guess we should read that, maybe? Or do I want to read, will I be more interested in the three body problem? He gave me options. <laughs> because I think maybe I'd be more interested in that one. Like I think there's more, there's more chance of success with the three body problem. This is difficult. I think I'm more likely to enjoy the three body problem. I've heard a lot of people really enjoying it. So maybe I'll go with that. And then we'll read, what is the other, what's the nonfiction book called? A purpose-guided universe. So maybe I'll give that a go. 
Maybe I'll give that a go. I listen, I used to read a lot of stuff like this when I did religious studies A level, but religious studies when we did it was basically philosophy and ethics. And so I read a lot of stuff like this. Um, back then. So I think it could be an interesting throwback. So I think I'm gonna read The Three Body Problem and The Purpose Guided Universe because I'm always down for something to test me a little bit, which I feel like is always the goal of these. So we're gonna read more than three books in this vlog, but that's okay because we can just take the average again for the for the um for the leaderboard. So yeah, oh my god, this is so he loves reading. What a what a <laughs> what a opposition between Monica and <laughs> Now we just wait. For Freddy's, Freddy's video, I'm very excited. <laughs> okay, so story time. <laughs> Freddy Prince Jr. cancelled my cameo request. <laughs> I think Coolsville sucks. It's because I said I like Scooby Doo, isn't it? Because I said I love Scooby Doo. Because I said Scooby Doo is like the most influential form of my entire life and my relationship. What do you want me to do, Freddy? Do you want me to lie? Do you want me to lie and say it's not pure cinema? Because he doesn't like it. He doesn't like the Scooby Doo movies. Not my fault you don't have taste. <laughs> No, there's a multitude of reasons people can cancel it. It was because it expired the seven days and kind of and adds a bit of time on, but you probably just don't have time. So I know I said I wasn't going to do a drag queen in this because I did the whole drag queens pick episode before and I was thinking of doing another one, but there just wasn't anyone else that was A in my budget that was floating my fancy. I thought about Louis Spence, who I do, who's in a lot of my <laughs> memes. What's gonna happen? Gonna shoot me? I doubt it. They have to catch me first, I'm like a whippet. His is like 120 pounds. Respectfully, Louis Spence, I'm not paying 120 pounds to you. <laughs> so I have gone with one of my favorite drag queens, which is Crystal Method. I love Crystal Method. One of my favorite drag queens. I have such a soft spot for Crystal Method. Let me just tell you, Crystal Method got this video back to me in like 12 hours from when I requested it. I haven't watched the video, but I can see the thumbnail in full drag. 12 hours later in full drag. I mean, <laughs> There's just levels here to the dedication. So let's watch this video, shall we? And find out the last book or books that we're gonna be reading. I'm not sure I can take many more multiple books. Please just tell me you like your absolute favorite, Crystal. <laughs> let's see. Hello, Megan. It's Hello. me, Crystal Method. Just the goddess herself <laughs> coming down and saying, hey, I love that oh. you're a bookworm. Um, <gasps> for me, you wanna know what my favorite book is? I do. I feel like Asking me to pick a favorite book is like asking me to pick a favorite dress. I could never decide. <laughs> um, it is Pride currently, and I just finished <gasps> the festivities, and this was my outfit. Ah! It's a rainbow, which Look I at that. know. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Know, Megan, it's a little predictable, but <laughs> I, I think it was it. done excellently. I, I brought the, the sunshine. And it was a cloudy day. Oh. Um, but the book I'm reading right now, it's a reread of Party Monster by James St. James, we love. <gasps> and another one of the books that I love is called The Spell, but the spell. it is basically gay smut. So, not sure about <laughs> that. And then... Um, Wait, I have to... <laughs> well, Crystal, I just read Door Smut. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't... You know, I'm up for anything. That's fine. The thing for me is I love just a little something. I, I, okay. I listen to Babbling Brook when I go to bed because I like to feel like a little um, fairy nymph <laughs> sleeping in the forest in the shade. Um, so the books I choose are, I love a lot of fantasy <gasps> books. I love like any classic story time twist, anything yes. like that. Um, Stardust, <gasps> one of my favorites. Also a great movie. Yes. Um, but yes, thank you so much. And um, good luck with the YouTube channel. I know how hard that can be thank because you. Megan, I have like three YouTube videos in my computer that I just need oh. to edit and I haven't yet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so maybe you will, if you see a YouTube video pop up in the next <laughs> week or so, know that you were the one that inspired me and I appreciate you for that. Holding me accountable. Love, love you. you. <laughs> one final spin. Oh my God, I love it. Just so you can see the hair too. Like, uh. Okay, bye! Oh my god, I love you, Crystal Method. I love you, Crystal Method. <laughs> okay, we have a few options. We have, I'm so sorry, I do not know what that reread. What is that book? A fabulous but true tale of murder in Clubland. Wait, is it a memoir? Hang on. <laughs> Obviously, I know who James St. James is, like iconic club kid. I'm sorry, it seems like it's a memoir. I got excited. 
I read the fabulous but true tale of murder. I should have seen that it was a true. It's a true story. I'm not excited over real murder. Let me just say. <laughs> sorry, I thought it was a murder mystery at first. I thought I'd stuffed across a murder mystery. Do I want to read that? Or do I want to read Stardust? And I'm not sure which of the spell is the spell. I found one from 1988. You didn't give me a, an author name. <laughs> I don't know which one. Is it the one by Alan Hollinghurst? I'm not sure. I'm gonna go away and think about it. I can't decide which one or two or three of these we want to read. I don't know. I'm gonna go away and think about it and you'll see later in the video, but thank you, Crystal. What a, I feel like I got a fellow book lover here. I love when I feel like I'm a fellow book lover. Okay, I will go get my hands on these books and then I'll let you know what we're going to be reading. Ah! Hello beautiful humans. I am I think just under halfway through the three body problem, our first book of the vlog. I'm 200 pages in now. <laughs> you got a character in the 1960s who witnesses her father be beaten to death during the Chinese Cultural Revolution and that shapes on what she goes on to do and then we're following four decades later a nanotech engineer who is told to infiltrate this group of scientists because strange stuff has been happening with scientists and a lot of, you're still crooked, a lot of scientists have been unaliving themselves and it's something to do with this countdown and perhaps we're also looking at contact with aliens and there's this game that he, that guy keeps playing. There's like this online game that's like VR headset, like immersive gaming and he keeps playing this game. I'm, okay, here's the thing. I'm not quite, uh, <laughs> not quite understanding. Oh, I'm confused, I'm confused, I'm confused, confused, confused. And a lot of that is me. A lot of that is me and my personal situation. And we'll talk about that in a sec. Let's talk about the book first. But I'm not quite getting it, but I'm not letting that really affect my reading. Like I'm reading it. I basically just read it. I haven't comprehended it. I've read it, but I'm not disliking it. We still have promise, but do I really understand no, I'd say I understand like the real world, but I don't really understand how the game and real world match up. Like I'm still not understanding what the relevance of those is. And like the alien thing is very much in the synopsis. We've only had a hint, a glimmer of the alien thing. This is very intense sci-fi. This is like beyond hard sci-fi. This is like, I feel like some of the most intelligent <laughs> book you could ever read. And I just, this isn't the ideal time. For it. You know what I mean? I'm not the ideal client of this book, but I am, I'm liking it. At the moment I'd say it's like a 3, 3.5, but in a good way rather than a bad way. I mean, I'm coming to this with zero expectations and I can recognize that this is probably wonderful if you read a lot of stuff like this a lot, but this is just a bit clever for me, babes. I like, you know, cozy murder mystery. <laughs> Get me Lady Hardcastle on the phone stat. I would rather read Lady Hardcastle on the phone solve their ninth millionth murder. Call the police. We need to call the police. Then read this, if I'm entirely honest with you. No, I don't know. It's fine. I'm just not quite getting it. I'm not quite getting how it all matches up. But like I said, some of that is me. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I don't wanna cry yet because I may be crying later in this video. But um, things are really hard right now. I haven't spoken about it a lot, but you guys know that Rora has been very ill for over a month now. And um, we, th <laughs> we thought it was, it was, um, we thought it was it yesterday. And she rallied at the vets. Um, so she's still alive. <laughs> Um, and she's in there today for tests, some more tests. We've, we don't really know what's wrong with her and we've been trying everything. I don't want to cry because, you know, I don't think this is, I don't think this is the last time I'll probably be crying in this vlog, but, um, I've just been crying for days. <laughs> I haven't been able to start this vlog because I just keep crying, but, um, yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. Uh, I'll talk more about it if, if uh, you know, the worst does happen. But just just know that this is probably not the best book for me to be reading right now. Like, intense brain. I mean, a lot of the books in this vlog are pretty brain intensive. I think I'll read one of Chris. I probably, I should read one of the non-fictions next because we've got more non-fiction in this vlog to read. Maybe I'll read Crystal Method's non-fiction because I think... 
that will be it's like true crime um so maybe that would be a bit easier but yeah I just don't think mentally that this is uh this is what I need right now <laughs> but I want to persevere and read it because I'm like 200 pages in and like I said I'm enjoying it I just need to to grasp it a bit more now I have more books <laughs> I have more books to open with you guys, which I feel like I'm going to take a moment to calm down and then let's go open some books. I very kindly been sent and see what they are and have a little bit of a pick me up. We somehow have four parcels to open again. <laughs> I don't know how this, well, it keeps happening because my patrons and some of you guys are just the kindest people on this earth and know that I am going through it. Also, we have the whole Discord Riddler, Discord Elf. Discord Miss Elf stuff going on on the Patreon. We've unmasked the Discord Riddler. They wanted to be unmasked. <laughs> if you watched last week's video, I opened a book from them and had a note from them. We now know who they were, who the culprit was, but we still don't know who the other ones are. Discord Elf, Discord Miss Elf, a different, different people. We could have more. Anyways. <laughs> I would be lying to my core if I said that I hope there's no more drama here. <laughs> so let's open these, shall we? and see who they're from very kindly. Our first book is from Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. We have got, ooh, The Murder of Mr. Wickham. This is a murder mystery inspired by Jane Austen. <laughs> oh, so we've got Emma is holding the, is, Emma's holding the party. Mr. Wickham's not invited, but he comes and he's murdered. I did enjoy Pride and Premeditation by Terza Price. I need to read the rest in that series, but this is another, Jane Austen inspired murder mystery. And I've heard really, really good things about this one. I've heard that it's very much like a very satisfying murder mystery. And I think it's very interesting. Like, I think I enjoyed how Pride and Premeditation did it, but it didn't feel, where do you scale that line between being a Pride and Prejudice retelling and being a murder mystery? You know what I mean? I think that's interesting. So thank you so much, Carrie. I'm so, so excited to read this one. That's been one I've been meaning to get to for ages. Let's see what this, this feels large. What is this? Whoa. Oh, this is also from Carrie. I know you've been having a hard time lately, so maybe these will bring you some joy. You are so loved and appreciated. I'm gonna cry, Carrie. No, I'm really gonna cry. <laughs> Guys, this is a book I have seen so many times and almost bought for myself. It is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever... <laughs> Carrie! Carrie, 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 thank you so much. It's one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. It's this special edition. Of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And it is, I mean, firstly, look at how gorgeous that front is. It's like a cloth bound. I don't even know how to describe what this, it's like a fabric almost. And I think we have some gorgeous, um, yeah, we do gorgeous illustrations throughout. Oh, oh my gosh. I need to reread Pride and Prejudice immediately. I mean, it's still my favorite book that I've read so far this year. Oh my God, I love it. <gasps> Oh my God, Carrie, thank you so much. Thank you. That's all, I, I don't know what else to say. Thank you. It's it's amazing. It's so amazing to me. I'm like, I, my breath is <laughs> taken away. This is like such a gorgeous edition of my fave. I love how this feels. I love it. This deluxe edition of Jane Austen's masterpiece features the full color art of Bill Donovan, the first appointed art in residence for Christian Dior. <gasps> I love it. Thank you so much, Carrie. This is like gonna be a prized possession. When I move out and I have a bigger bookshelf set up, you best believe this is gonna be face out, front and center. I just love how it, f Carrie. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna cry. Okay, let's see what else we've got. You guys, you're like, was too kind. You are too kind. Next. <gasps> Who is this from? What? What? <laughs> this note says, a gift from Josh Hutchison, brackets real. I love baking from Josh Hutchison, brackets real. Hmm, funny. Yes, but not funny, haha. -ha. Funny, weird. Is this someone called Josh Hutchison? Or the Josh Hutchison? What? Have we got a new anonymous person on the Discord? But it, why does it say real? Josh, if you're Josh out there, thank you. 
<laughs> well, the gift we have is the mystery guest by Nita Prose. This is the sequel to The Maid by Nita Prose, which I really did enjoy. Uh, thank you so much though. I'm very excited for the next in this series and to make progress in the series. I reckon this will be nominated for the Goodest Choice Awards, seeing as The Maid won. So um, yeah, I'll probably be reading that in this video, a uh, video at the end of the year. And then final book. Whoa, that was quite an extreme open. From <gasps> the Discord Elf. <laughs> Happy Bingathon, thank you for this amazing Discord community you created and congrats on double bingo from Discord Elf. Discord Elf, we still don't know who they are. <laughs> Discord Elf, oh yes, got me Dead Man's Folly by Agatha Christie. This is another one of those special editions that like I say, I'm not really a book collector, but like this and this. <laughs> basically the extent of my collecting. I love these editions of Agatha Christie books. I don't know, is this one a Pro? Yeah, this is a later Pro. I just add all of these to my wish list because I love owning them and love collecting them. So this is a bit of a later Pro. It will take me a while to get around to it, but thank you Discord Elf because I love owning these. I also love this edition. I love, love, love the design on this one. So thank you everyone who sent me something. Josh Hutchison, maybe a new anonymous identity. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I love you. I'm gonna go try and make progress in the three-body problem. I'm gonna try and finish it today. So maybe I'll see you later today with my final thoughts. Hello, friends. Um, <laughs> crying already. Um, if you excuse me, there's gonna be a bit of a brief interlude in this vlog because um, I have to tell, <laughs> fuck, I have to tell you, that Rora's gone. We had to put her to sleep a couple of days ago. <laughs> I've waited a couple of days to film this and I hope that I wouldn't cry immediately. <laughs> I, thought I'd, I thought I'd at least be able to get through the beginning. <laughs> um, She's gone. As I'm sure you can imagine, we're all re really devastated. But she's been ill for a long time and I haven't really spoken about it a lot and I've alluded to it in the past month. Um, but I just kept hoping I'd come back with good news, you know, <laughs> that she was getting better, but she didn't really ever get better. She kind of stabilised. Um, and in, but in the last couple of days she deteriorated a lot. And, uh, like I said to you in the, in the previous clip, we thought on Tuesday night it was it and we took her into the vets and we were talking about it and as a last ditch attempt we put out some food in front of like cheap ass food. Food we have, food we have the posh version of at home and she ate as if we haven't eaten <laughs> fed her anything for months but you know I think it was kind of the adrenaline and fear and then on Wednesday she went into the vets for some tests and the test showed that she was in a pretty bad way um and my mum kind of spoke to him about me he was saying we could operate um on her because she had some issues that would need operation and um but it just became clear that she, it, it was it you know um, uh, so because my mum put her in the carrier at the vets my mum picked her up on the way back from work so I've gone for every other vet appointment but I wasn't there and she put her in the cat carrier and said that she just started making these awful like whimpering noises and she kept making them a bit throughout the rest of the evening so my mum brought her home and we had two hours with her before we had to take her back to the vet. So we all got to sit with her and tell her how much we loved her. At one point I was like, guys, you gotta stop saying nice stuff to her. She wants to be told she's a bad bitch. Um, and then we went back to the vets and I held her and that was it, you know? Sorry, I'm trying not to cry trying to hold them in and say that I'm at least a little bit legible so she's gone and it was so sad sorry we were so sad you know that she's been so ill over the past month we've been trying everything we can you know we've been to the vets multiple times a week we love our vet he's so lovely He's so amazing and um, we've been trying everything and nothing was making her better. He thinks based on some of her behaviours, he thinks there was a tumour that we just weren't finding on any of the tests. Um, but she's gone and I'm just so sad. Sorry. But I knew, you know, I knew those last couple of days that it was it. Um, 
Uh, and, uh, sorry, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to say to you, so I'm probably just rambling. Um, you know, one of the things while she's been ill that's really worried me was, um, how Lux would react, because we knew we'd have to bring her home for the boys to smell, because my first cats that we had growing up, they didn't really even like each other. They didn't dislike each other, but they kind of just tolerate each other. And when the first died, she spent weeks and weeks looking for him. So if you don't know, Lux is Rora's son and he's always been so obsessed with her. <laughs> like she follows her around, sits on her. And she's like, fuck off. Um, but we brought her home and he smelt her a couple times, kind of hesitantly. We let him come round to it and both him and Miko smelt her and he didn't, you know, I'd cry <laughs> a lot before imagining what it'd be like and imagining the sounds he'd make. And um, he didn't really, he's done a few sad meows um, the past couple of days where we think he's kind of meowing for her. But I think him and Miko knew before we did, maybe we held on to her for a bit too long. Um, because, you know, the first couple weeks that she was ill, Lux was by her side every day, all day. You know, couldn't couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> couldn't get rid of him. And then the past two weeks, he hasn't wanted to know her. I don't think they've been together for more than a couple minutes. And that's only if he wanted to steal some of the food that we were, like, laying around her because we kept you know all day every day we were trying to get to eat something trying to coax her into eating and coax her into doing anything um yeah him and Miko have kind of stayed far away for the past couple of weeks so I think they knew um and obviously he has Miko who he loves <laughs> Lux is very needy so um you know that concern I don't think cats necessarily react in the way that we expect them to to something like that so he got to smell her and he, I think he knows but yeah, <laughs> she was just such, such a wonderful cat. She was so funny. She had so much character. She was so beautiful. She was so mean. <laughs> she was so mean. Uh, we called it the one, two, three. The roar. <laughs> um, she was so mean to the boys. I was so scared of her, but Lux loved her so much. Um. So yeah, it's really sad. <laughs> it's really, really sad. And I think for me, one of the biggest things is I feel, I feel really cheated out of time with her. You know, she, I, she was, to our knowledge, 10. But we think perhaps her past owners said that they were younger than they were. Both her and Lux are also very like genetically ill. <laughs> we don't know if it's either it's genetics or we think maybe they had some illness that made them really expensive to insure and that then their their owners gave them away without kind of passing that information on so that um they wouldn't be because we got them through cats protection so that they wouldn't be uh to you know the insurance wouldn't be too expensive for anyone else. So we think also there's a possibility that her and Lux are a bit older than we when we got told they were three and two when we got them, but they've always acted a bit older. So, you know, they could have knocked a couple years off what they told the age was, so because they knew, you know, older cats are harder to be adopted. So people more likely to adopt them if they're a bit younger. So so we thought she was ten, but she could be older. But growing up, the two cats I had growing up were 16 when they passed and like 22 23 which is kind of ridiculous <laughs> like it's kind of I know that is, Nana was old as fuck <laughs> my old cat um but I just feel like I just expected to have a lot longer with her you know um like I thought <laughs> when I had like a baby <laughs> and this is stupid but that she'd be here <sighs> And it just felt so drawn out and cruel, you know, when we were giving her the medicine. It just felt so cruel doing it to him. We doing everything we could a bit felt cruel. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah. It's very sad. I'm devastated. I'm devastated. But I was worried I'd feel like we hadn't fought for her or we hadn't tried everything but we did you know and I do feel <laughs> at least a bit relieved that she's not in pain anymore 
because, like, the, you know, she was making these horrible noises at the end. She couldn't move. She didn't move out the cat carrier the last two hours that we were at home with her. Sorry. So it was what was best for her. You know, she couldn't go on like that. But I feel guilty that her last day she was at the vets for a couple of hours, you know, and scared. But those last couple of days she wasn't eating anymore. She couldn't walk, you know, more than two steps, really. It was sad for Tom as well. He was up north still for work. He's actually coming back today. She only missed him by a couple of days. And she loved her so much. <laughs> it was just to tell her that she was his favourite and the boys sucked. <laughs> um, so it's sad. It's very sad. But yeah, thank you for indulging me. I don't, you know, I haven't, I don't know what I've just said, really. I think I've, at the same time, I haven't thought about what I was going to say. And I've thought about saying this to you 10,000 times. I don't know if I did a good job either way. But, um, yeah. She was very amazing. <laughs> and I just can't really believe it still. It hasn't really sunk in. I don't really believe it. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I guess that's all that there is to say for now. But you know, I'm glad that Lux is Miko and they've been very close the past couple of days and hopefully it's all gonna be okay. But I'm gonna miss her a lot. The energy doesn't feel right without the lady, <laughs> the little lady of the house, little naughty girl. <laughs> I'm very sad. Um, I haven't read any more of the book. I'm gonna go do some reading today. But uh, yeah, it's been a rough month. It's been a rough month because she's been ill all month, and we were just trying to not have this be the outcome. The past couple of days I've just had like three screens on at every one time so I can't have a single thought because as soon as I think about it I just start crying. Like today I had to do my clothes wash. <laughs> I had to do my clothes wash and the hoodie that I held her in as she went still had like a mouth gunk. <laughs> She had a mucky mouth because she wasn't taking care of herself anymore. My my little pristine lady who was obsessed with washing was well, through the mess, you know, at the end. I just had all that mouth gunk on the shoulder and I just felt so horrible washing it. <sighs> Anyways, I don't know how much that I'm going to keep in because I'm just ugly crying. I thought I'd make it maybe two minutes without crying. Um, But yeah, we're devastated. Devastated. Sorry, I keep trying to talk and then just bursting into sobs again. Anyways, I'm gonna go. Um, thank you all for loving her and, you know, seeing what an amazing little cat she was. I wish I'd shared more on it. I feel like I, all I do is ever show the cats, but I think she had a Aurora live stream up 24 7 because <laughs> she was a fucking icon. She was amazing. I loved her so much. And I remember thinking, sorry, I know I've been speaking for fucking ages. Thank you. You can, you know, people who want, don't want to watch this would have skipped it. Um, I remember when it was a really lovely warm spell in March, and uh, not March, May, a really like heat wave spell in May, and she spent all the time outside. She was really enjoying being out in the garden, just sat out there all day into the evening. She was just living her best life. And I remember thinking at the time, like, oh, I'm so glad that she could have this moment. I think I kind of knew, you know, and I kept thinking to myself in that moment, like, why are you thinking that? Like, she's fine. <laughs> why are you thinking that? But I think some part of me knew. I mean, she had been ill since January. She'd been throwing up almost every day since January. So she had been ill, but she really deteriorated in the past, like, four to six weeks. Um, lost so much weight. She only weighed two kilograms at the end. There was, like, nothing of her. And she used to be fat. She used to be fat as hell. She used to be, like, a little chunky lady. <laughs> And so she was like tiny, she was like a kitten. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was what was best for her, but we're very sad. Anyways, I'm gonna go read. I probably won't see you today because I probably won't finish the book today, but I'm gonna try and, you know, at least now there's like, there's closure for her. And, you know, 
life can move on a bit because for the past month when I haven't been filming I've basically just been caring for her you know so anyways um not the update I thought I'd be coming to you one day saying oh she's better but that didn't happen so yeah there's no way to end this so I'm just gonna say bye and I'll see you in a bit hello this was not the book for me to read right now <laughs> I finished it but if I had to give my understanding a percentage mark, maybe eight out of a hundred, eight <laughs> percent. I'm gonna be honest. I don't really understand the point of this. I never connected to the book. I never was reading the book and I was like, I mean, I always understood what was going on, but like, did I understand why I was reading it? No, why is the camera so close to me? <laughs> you know, and a lot of that, this is a case of it's me, right? It's me, the problem isn't high. The problem is me. There's a big arrow pointing, red flashing arrow pointing at my head because this was just not the kind of book I needed to be reading at the moment that I had the headspace for. You know, I needed to be reading an Ellie Hazelwood or some shit, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna give this two stars. You've been very, very arsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very arsh. But it's a two star that's, you know, saying more about me than it's saying about the book and I hope that's okay. Sorry, James Masters, but it's the, <laughs> it's the truth. I will say that I liked the parallels to real life, a lot of parallels to China and stuff that happened in the Cultural Revolution and after and I thought that was very interesting. But the characters all felt very, very wooden to me. They all felt very similar. They all, a lot of them are working in science and they all just feel like one note. I can understand why a lot of the characters have been changed from my understanding for the TV show because it just, I just don't, I didn't get anyone's measure. I didn't get a sense of anyone or anything. The most interesting person is like this policeman who's supposed to be a bit shit at <laughs> his job. He was quite, he was refreshing when he came on the page at least. He was a breath of fresh air. There was a little, little signal in my brain that got a little bit excited because he was at least giving me something. I would, we'd move from scene to scene to scene and I was like, what? <laughs> You know, also there's, I don't know if I mentioned in the first clip, but there's this game that plays a big role in it. And there's a world in the game and then there's the real world. And I didn't get, how, well, I did get how they interlinked, but I don't get why I'm supposed to care. <laughs> I don't know. I think that was kind of dual timeline-y and they, they kind of moved between them without reason. Like we'd randomly at the end spend like a hundred pages in the game or on this, in this place, or, or hearing this person's backstory. And it just felt like even by the end of the book, we were still kind of setting stuff up. We were still kind of establishing certain characters, giving them their backstory, like at the end. I don't know, it felt like it was the kind of book where you're supposed to just understand everything by the end and then you can move on in the second and third, but I don't know, guys. <laughs> But I recognize that a lot of that is down to me and what has been happening whilst I've been reading this book and it's just not been the vibe. I, me and this book have not been well matched, but I'm giving it two stars. I've now gotten out my Kindle from, I don't know when the last time I used this was years ago. It's actually, I do have a Kindle. I just never use it because I don't read eBooks, but it's my granddad's cast off, his <laughs> second secondhand Kindle when he got a new one. Um, but I'm gonna start the eBook for Party Monster today because I think that'll be more like accessible to my brain. And I think it's quite short. So I'll probably check in with you once I finished it. It's true story, true life story. So I'm looking forward to reading it and seeing what I'll think. I'll let you know. I think it's gonna be interesting. I don't know if I've read anything like it before in terms of like, I think it's told in quite an interesting way. So I'll let you know what I think when I finished it. Hello friends. <laughs> Hello friends, how are we all doing? Before we talk about my thoughts on Party Monster, I need to give you guys some context because I have not finished Party Monster. It's been over a week well over a week since I last spoke to you. It is the 16th of July today. I've read two books in July so far. Two books, the two books you've seen in this video. And I'm pretty sure the first one, the Three Body Problem, I started in June. So it's been almost two weeks since Rora passed away and life hasn't been great. <laughs> so I gave myself some time, you know, after Rora passed away, we were all very raw emotionally for a little while. And then my parents had a holiday pre-book they couldn't get out of. So they went away on holiday. And then we had some family illness that I was, myself and Tom and Toby were responsible for whilst they were away. And then my parents' car got stolen off of our drive in the middle of the night. 
bearing in mind my bedroom's at the front of our house and we, me and Tom sleep with our, both our windows wide open. I don't know how I didn't hear anything, but their car got stolen. I opened the blinds one morning. My parents are on a cruise. They're uncontactable because they're in the one country on the cruise that isn't in the EU, so they don't have any phone data. <laughs> and their car got stolen in the middle of the night. So, um, yeah, life hasn't been great. <laughs> it's been the worst week of my life, actually. Oh, oh God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, I said about the fact that the past couple months have been some of the hardest ever that I have experienced whilst I've been on YouTube. So it's been pretty intense. It's been pretty intense. But I'm hoping things will just kind of corner now and I'm trying to have radical optimism and just be happy and just, oh, you know. But so <laughs> I'm giving Party On Set three stars. But I want to caveat that with like, I've been through the ringer babes, you know? And so it's taken me a week to read this 200 page book. It shouldn't have done. It should have been a super, I think it took me like two hours of actual reading time. I've done two hours of actual reading time in the past week because I've just been struggling. <laughs> it's been hard out here. It's been very hard out here. Yeah, I'm giving it three stars, but I want to like caveat that with the same caveat that the last book had where I believe that my life is, is, uh, is affecting <laughs> my reading perhaps a little bit but hopefully that will start to change now but um yeah party monster is the true crime story of a murder that happened within the club kid group in the 1990s in new york and it's written by james st james who i was aware of james st james had a youtube series on the wow presents youtube channel like early drag race days which i really enjoyed so i was aware of james st james and he was obviously friends he's very actually very close friends with the guy who who was the murderer and it says like it's billed as like a murder mystery it ain't a murder mystery you know from the beginning who killed <laughs> who killed the person and how and i think my biggest issue with this was just that it felt like the story was actually pretty simple like when you boil it down to its bare bones it's not enough to have a book and so there's like a lot of like offshoots of not very relevant in my opinion things that we go off into like learning the deep backstory of someone who isn't even present in the character characters in the people in the books lives when the murder happens like going deep 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 into their backstory i just felt like it, it got a little bit lost in the weeds sometimes I, I enjoyed it it had a very interesting writing style james james had a very interesting writing style it's very confused because there's a lot of drugs <laughs> everyone's on a lot of heavy intense drugs at this point and so recollections of things and like retellings of things is very manic and very frantic and very all over the place and he he has this like writing style where he'll use capitals or bolds or italics to emphasize certain points which i thought was interesting but i just wasn't looking forward to reading it right i wasn't like oh i can't wait to pick my book up i was like i want to play the sims instead and that's only the barometer as to whether I'm enjoying a book so you know I, I can see why this is like a classic and it's it's an interesting look into the club kid culture at the time which I didn't know about and it has it's the kind of book that like you don't enjoy the book that much on its own but if I think I was told the story through a different medium I would perhaps be more interested so it's made me want to go look at like documentaries from the time into the club kids and the kind of culture at the time so yeah I, I, I enjoyed it I think if you're a fan of drag it's a very interesting perspective to read because our drag now because of drag race is so sanitized is so safe is so clean really and that's not where a lot of the roots of drag come from and i think some people kind of want to ignore these grittier parts but they're really at the core of what of what has made the drag scene into drag scene today so i think if you if you enjoy a drag race i would recommend picking it up i think it's fascinating and i think on another day if my life wasn't a mess <laughs> fucking hell i can't believe they stole the car off the drive guys and our car was supposed to be one that they can't steal. <laughs> I am fucking fuming! Mega, mega fucking fuming! You blocked, I was like running around, like knocked over my neighbor's doors, like show me your ring camera. Anyways, um, if my life wasn't a mess, it's the kind of book I could have read in one day and enjoyed, you know? So anyways, next, <laughs> I think it's time to read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. Hey, yeah, yeah. If I told you I was looking forward to this, it would be an absolute 
god honest lie. I'd be lying through my teeth. I'm not excited to read this. But who knows? I'm gonna try and go into it with an open mind because sometimes when I do these videos and I end up reading like I don't know, self-helpy non I don't know why I should use a camera, I was uncomfortable. Um, self-helpy non-fiction or uh, spiritual non-fiction. I, I think I enjoy it less in a video format than if I were to read it or of my own volition, just in my life. Like the four agreements or I don't know, what else have I read like that? Oh, this, the, what's the, this, the power of now? Power of now, those books, I didn't enjoy when I read them in vlogs because I think my mindset's a little bit different when I'm vlogging something versus when I'm actually trying to be open. So I'm gonna try and be open to this. So who knows, I might become a productivity guru, hustle culture, like, <laughs> no. Who knows, who knows, but I wanna try, I want to try and get something from this. I want to try and go into it with an open mind. So I'll let you know when I think and I'm a little bit of the ways through. Do I think I'm going to enjoy it? No. But I'm going to, I don't want to be a complete waste of my time. So I'm going to try and learn something and take something from this. Right. Hello, friends. <laughs> Firstly, I realised I didn't tell you early in the vlog, but I made the decision to only read one book per celebrity because this vlog had gone on for like three weeks. I'm struggling with reading. So much shit has happened <laughs> during this vlog of my life. I just wanted to like move past it. So it does mean I now own Stardust by Neil Gaiman with no plans to read it. It also means I put a Purpose Guided Universe on my TBR Cluedo for this month. Not reading it. <laughs> Not reading it. I did however get 200 pages into The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I'm DNFing it. <laughs> Not because I think it's awful, I'm just getting nothing from this. I tried, I really went into it with open, open opinions, <laughs> open arms, and um, I'm not getting anything from it. Now this is basically what it says in the tin, it's like trying to help you live an effective life, get over the barriers in your life, like optimise your life to have the right attitude per PMA. <laughs> have a PMA. Just gotta try and have a PMA. The folks are PMA. Positive mental attitude. Get fucked. <laughs> That's what it's trying to do. Now, I think what it's saying is important and correct. There's a few moments it's made me realize things, right? It's made me realize things about myself. It's made me go, huh, yeah, I do have that reaction to certain things, or I do let that affect my emotions, and I'm overly dependent on this, or this person, or this kind of thing happening. I'm overly dependent on that, and that's not good. It's made me realize that, but it hasn't really given me any ways to change it, other than being like, Write a life mission statement about what you want your life to be and then it'll change. I'm like, okay, okay. Like it's kind of made me realize problems with myself but it hasn't really given me any way to resolve it. And I read the first three habits. There's seven in total. There's like a big, big chunk of the opening is like opening up and telling you the process and like the base level of the book. So I read the first three habits and the first three habits are like inner work and then the other ones are outer work. And it says like, oh, you can't do the outer ones if you don't start with the first one. So if I've gotten nothing from those initial ones, I don't think I'm gonna get anything from the rest of the book. Sadly, I am not a hustle culture optimization girly yet. <laughs> these kind of books, here's the thing, here's my opinion with these kind of books, this, this genre of books with this cover that every like, when you search on YouTube like best books, it'll be people reading these kind of books. Here's my opinion. It's not saying, the, the ideas aren't outdated. The ideas that this book is giving you are not outdated. What is outdated is the way you're telling it to me. I'm just not connecting. I'm not, and that's the whole purpose of these books. You have to connect to the message of it. I'm not resonating really with the book. I'm not resonating with it. So yeah, I don't know. And I just like, I was gonna try and persevere, but you guys always tell me DNF <laughs> when I'm not enjoying it. And life's been rough. And I'm very excited for the books I'm reading in my next vlog. And I just kind of want this done. This vlog, we've been through a lot. <laughs> we've been through a lot in this vlog and it's gone on for a long time. And I'm just, I'm done, I'm done. So here's the thing. Obviously we have the Year of Rex leaderboard. Um, we've given a three star, a two star. And I, I, I guess a DNF has to be zero zero points because I didn't finish it. Not that I'd give this zero. I probably would have given this a two star had I finished it. But um, I think we have to give it a zero, which means the celebrity's average rating <laughs> for their episode of Year of Rex was a 1.66. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so yeah, 
yeah, definitely our worst so far. Hopefully it will stay our worst. To be fair, they're probably the one source of recommendation that is like really not qualified <laughs> that we're gonna be consulting. Everything else is qualified and everything else is personalized to me in Year of Rex, whereas like this wasn't really personalized to me, it was just what their favorite book was. So I suppose it does check out. But uh, yeah, it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough for the celebrities. I will not be uh, consulting celebrities for what I should read if I actually want to read good books. If I want to have fun, yes, I probably will do it again because it is kind of fun getting these videos. <laughs> but yeah, that is our celebrity episode of Year of Rex. Thank you guys for watching. Apologies, this one, you know, my life has been all over the place, but I'm hoping things will calm down and <laughs> restabilize. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of any of the books. I probably should have read Stardust instead of Party Monster but at the time when I read that I was still intending on reading five books for this vlog but I did cut it down to three just because otherwise this vlog would have gone for another week and I just felt like emotionally also it's so hard also I felt like emotionally I needed a fresh slate so anyways thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video bye